Today on the newscast, China making major moves in the Middle East as it pushes for global government. Get all the breaking details next. Folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to the Watchman Newscast. We've been telling you about an alliance of four nations that I call the Gathering Storm Coalition. China, Iran, Russia, and North Korea have united together against the West, and three charter members of that Gathering Storm Coalition have gathered together this week in the Middle East for major joint military drills. China, Iran, and Russia, their navies are training together in the Gulf of Oman through Sunday, March 19th. Now, the Biden administration says they're, quote, watching this very closely. I would hope so. And you know Israel is indeed watching because this is happening, number one, in Israel's backyard. But number two, Israel sees this gathering storm coalition coming together. Look no further than Russia and Iran and that growing relationship, which is literally at Israel's doorstep in Syria right now, where you have thousands of Russian and Iranian troops, not to mention their ally Hezbollah, at Israel's northern border. So Israel watching all of these developments with great concern, including China's moves in the Middle East. Now, last week we told you about China playing the lead role in brokering this new normalization of relations, a diplomatic deal, between Iran and Saudi Arabia. And folks, don't forget that China also, in 2021, signed a $400 billion 20-year deal with Iran, a cooperation agreement that will see China give Iran uh, technological know-how, I'm sure some military know-how as well. And in exchange, Iran will send China cheap fuel. And folks, that's one reason China is getting involved more in the Middle East. A few reasons. Number one, there is energy there, oil and gas, and China needs oil and gas for its very large population and its growing war machine. Secondly, and we said this on yesterday's newscast, the prophet Ezekiel talks about the hook in the jaw that will eventually bring Russia down to the Middle East in the latter days. It seems that hook is always there, emanating from the Middle East, Every time a new nation or empire wants to establish itself as a superpower, Xi Jinping, the Chinese president, will be visiting Moscow on Monday, March 20th. Now, he's meeting on the 20th and 21st with Russian President Vladimir Putin. It will be Xi's first visit to Russia since the war with Ukraine broke out in February 2022. So we will watch very closely to see what kind of statements come out of these meetings between Xi and Vladimir Putin, two members of this gathering storm coalition. And there are differing ideologies among these four leading members. Again, Iran, North Korea, China, and Russia. Differing ideologies in many ways, but again, united by a desire to turn the West upside down and to supplant the West and establish what can only be called, in their words, in their view, a new world order. Where have we heard that before? And along those lines, Xi Jinping on Wednesday gave a speech where he called for a global civilization initiative. His words, which sounded absolutely Orwellian, he's basically proposing global governance, folks. Hey, it all sounds pretty harmless, right? Equity and justice and democracy. But these are three qualities that China's communist regime certainly does not employ with its own people. Again, Xi is calling for a global coming together. Eventually, we will see a global digital currency. That's coming down the pike. And the Chinese social credit system, which is enforced by the communist regime in Beijing, a completely draconian system where uh, the Chinese people are repressed, where they have no freedom of speech, really no freedom of movement at the end of the day, as the regime in Beijing, the regime of Xi, is always watching. We're going to talk to someone who was targeted, sanctioned, by the regime in Beijing in a minute. But up first, I want to tell you about the sponsor for today's newscast. We talk a lot here on the newscast about Israeli innovation and how Israel is blessing the world with amazing scientific, high-tech, health, and medical breakthroughs. 
Well, BioHarvest Sciences is one Israeli company that we love here at The Watchman that's on the cutting edge of improving the daily lives of people around the world. They've introduced an incredible new product called Vinia, which is now Israel's leading blood flow superfood. Now, the reason why Vinia is so effective is because it increases blood flow and improves circulation, which means you'll have more physical energy and mental alertness throughout the day to do the things that you love. Vinia significantly increases the dilation of your arteries, which means more oxygen and nutrients get to your brain, your heart, and other tissues that support heart health. And folks, best of all, it's made in Israel, which means you're not only getting healthier, but you're also blessing Israel through supporting an Israeli-made product and a great Israeli company. You see the information there on your screen to get started with Vinia. Just call 1-800-600-3619 or visit viniabloodflow.com and be sure to use the discount code WATCHMAN to get a 10% discount on your first purchase. Hey, don't miss out on this great opportunity to improve your health and well-being. I highly recommend that you try Vinia today. But let's dig now back into the China issue, which is the main focus of today's newscast. As I mentioned a minute ago, Xi is talking about a global civilization initiative. But what does Xi's worldview look like and how does he employ it in his own country and what are the consequences for Christians? Take a look. We are joined here at the Museum of the Bible in Washington, D.C. by author and activist Johnny Moore. Johnny, it's great to have you with us. Good to be with you. And what a topic, a topic you know very intimately, the Chinese regime and their suppression of any dissent. In 2017, you and a colleague co-wrote an open letter to Chairman Xi and encouraging him, imploring him to stop the persecution of Christians and religious minorities. Johnny, fast forward to 2021, the Chinese regime sanctioned you, why were they so upset with you and what you're trying to do? Well, look, the, the Chinese government knows that we know that they're weaker than that we think that they are. And, and, and here, here's the fact. The Chinese Communist Party has been on a dead-end road for a long period of time now. They're dragging along with them the Chinese citizens and at the heart of this, of this uh, attack on, on freedom is the, the human dignity of hundreds of millions of, of, of Chinese people. So yeah, I mean, there are Americans like me that are sanctioned because I dared raise my voice, uh, but we're, we're no victims. The victims are the hundreds of millions of Christians and others in the country uh, that the Chinese Communist Party either wants to shut up or forced to shut up. Yeah, I love your response to the sanctions. You said that basically this is a badge of honor uh, to be sanctioned by you, the regime in Beijing. What do these sanctions entail? Is it more symbolic on their part? Look, I mean, if the Communist Party of China thinks that I'm a threat enough to sanction, then they're in a lot more trouble than, than uh, we, we, we think that they are. Yeah. Uh, but basically, I can't travel to China. Yeah. And you know, that makes me sad, Eric, because I've been to China. I love the Chinese people. I love the Chinese history and Chinese culture. I would, I would love to go to China, uh, but, but that, that's the, what, I can't, what I can't do now. Yeah. But what they're not going to do is they're not going to shut me up, and they're not going to shut up millions and millions of people like me around the world. But if the Chinese Communist Party is going to shut down churches, imprison millions of Muslims, try to wipe out Tibetan history, take over Hong Kong, threaten to take over Taiwan, steal the intellectual property of the United States of America, and try to make the world in its communist Marxist image, then we're just not going to settle for it. My kids are not going to grow up in China's world. And you were very vocal and forthright about these issues, Johnny, as a commissioner on the International Commission on Religious Freedom under the previous administration here in DC. And you had a firsthand view in that role as commissioner to what China is doing to its Christian minority the persecuted Christians in China, major issue, of course. What is the state of the church in China right now? Well, the church is doing just fine. The, the Christianity has 2,000 years of history of only growing when tyrants threaten to suppress it. The church is going to be fine. There, there is no atheist communist leader in the world that can, that can limit the growth of the, of, of the church. Now, what they're trying to do is they're trying to intimidate the church. So in, in the last uh, 18 months and 24 months, the Chinese Communist Party has shut down every significant large church in the country. 
they have arbitrarily detained, confiscated the property, bulldozed, and in some, some cases disappeared and even killed uh, pastors. They've taken down thousands of crosses. When ISIS was at its height in Iraq and Syria, and the world was watching in horror as people were beheaded and all these terrible things were happening, in that one year, in one state in China, the Communist Party removed over a thousand crosses from, from churches. So they, they think they're wiping out Christianity, but the actual fact is there are now more Christians in China than there are members of the Communist Party. And this is an exciting development. You can't, you can't stop the gospel at the end of the day. Uh, tell us about Chairman Xi, who we mentioned earlier, you were sanctioned under his regime, but this is someone who seems to have a particular animus towards Christians. It seems like the persecution is escalating in China in recent years under his stewardship, and he's garnering more and more power. Yeah, you know, we're sitting here in Washington, D.C., and there aren't a lot of things that Democrats and Republicans agree upon in this city. Here's one thing they agree upon, that this regime in China is going in a very, very dangerous, dangerous direction. That, that, that the President Xi, who's, who's leading China, is having what, what I call a relapse to the cultural revolution. Now, the prosperity of China of the last generation or so didn't come because of the values of Mao and the cultural revolution, yeah. the economic progress, the, the, the global renown, all, all, all of these defining characteristics. They came because of the, the, the inculcation of, a, of Western ideas into a communist framework. Well, what President Xi is trying to do is he's trying to take China back to the Cultural Revolution. Yeah. The last time this happened, China killed 50 million of its own citizens. It tried to wipe out any dissent whatsoever. And what we're seeing is the cult of personality, the suppression of the economy. Wall Street is starting to realize it's a foolhardy deal to try to make money uh, with, with, with China, the suppression of, of religious freedom, of human rights. He has one goal. That is to control the Chinese people and along the way to control the rest of the world. Now, if you want to see my entire interview with Johnny Moore, be sure to check out our TBN special, The Rise of China. I believe it's one of the most important programs I have ever hosted. And folks, keep the church in China, which Johnny talked about in that interview, keep them in your prayers. It is one of the fastest growing churches in the world, despite, as Johnny described, relentless persecution from the communist regime in Beijing. At the end of the day, though, be encouraged because as China shows and because as we've seen throughout history, you can't stop the gospel. Thanks so much for joining us here today on The Watchman. Until next time, God bless you. And remember, never hold your peace. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the Watchman Newscast. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you never miss an upload. And tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. And don't forget to share your thoughts, insights, and comments below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here tomorrow.